Thank you for watching Deeper Than Red. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell when new episodes are released. Every last Wednesday of each month, a new episode will come out. Since the birth of the United States, the American dream has always meant the purchase of property. Not everyone was allowed to pursue this American dream. There has been over 100 years of racist policies, covenants, and laws used as tools to keep black Americans from achieving that American dream of owning property. Let's start at the beginning. In the early 1900s, black Americans started migrating out of the South in large numbers. There were a lot of reasons for this migration. The booming Northern industrial cities needed workers while the South fell into a deep economic depression. In addition to constantly living under the threat of racial violence, all these factors pushed black people out of the South. Unfortunately, the newly arrived black Americans were not welcomed by their white neighbors. White residents use an oppressive tool in keeping out their black neighbors called racial covenants. In 1917, the Supreme Court had abolished residential segregation laws. However, these covenants quickly accomplished the same thing. Racial covenants were contractual agreements that kept black people from moving into white neighborhoods. Sometimes the covenants were created by white neighbors determined to keep their community all white. Other times the covenants were put in place by real estate agents. Regardless of who initiated these covenants, they all enjoyed the legal enforcement of the U.S. government. Zoning was introduced in New York City in 1916. Most early zoning advocates saw zoning as an effective instrument in creating racial segregation. Local governments sought ways to keep white people in the most desirable neighborhoods and keep the non-whites out. Shortly after racist zoning practices started in New York, these practices rapidly spread across the United States. In the midst of the Great Depression, President Roosevelt commissioned the government's Homeowners Loan Corporation to map 239 cities. These maps divided neighborhoods into different real estate risk categories based on multiple factors, which included the race and ethnicity of its residents. The purpose of the mapping was to prevent the federal government and banks from exposure to risky mortgage loans. The neighborhoods were classified through four colors, green, blue, yellow, and red. Red neighborhoods were considered hazardous and dangerous. This is where the term redlining came from. Red-lined neighborhoods were also usually the only areas where black people were permitted to live. Black Americans found themselves in a difficult situation. They couldn't purchase homes in non-red-lined neighborhoods because these white neighborhoods had racial covenant. At the same time, banks refused to give mortgages to blacks trying to buy homes, even in red-lined areas. Therefore, many black folks became perpetual renters because they were denied opportunities to purchase a home. If black families could somehow obtain a loan, it was often at extremely high interest rates and fees. Redlining robbed generations of black families the opportunity to accumulate wealth through owning real estate for more than a hundred years. We're now in 2024. Has it changed much? Let's see. In 2022, the U.S. Treasury reported that the black-white gap in home ownership rates was the same in 2020 as it was in 1970. The U.S. Treasury also reported that in 2022, 
the home ownership rate for white households was 75% compared to 42% for black households. In addition, banks are still not lending to black Americans. In 2023, the U.S. Justice Department accused L.A.-based City National Bank of refusing to underwrite mortgages for Black and Latino communities. The bank was required to pay more than $31 million in the largest redlining settlement in history. City National Bank is just one of many institutions accused of practicing redlining today. As a result of decades of systemic racism and the loss of opportunity to pass on generational wealth, white families today have 10 times the wealth of black families on average. In the words of Dr. Maya Angelou, prejudice is a burden that confuses the past, threatens the future, and renders the present inaccessible. Thanks for watching Deeper Than Red. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media.